Okay, we're now going to look at the results for our one-way repeated measures ANOVA. Uh, part of the challenge is learning what to pay attention to and, and what to ignore. Uh, this first table gives us the levels for the within subject factors, so we know uh, which number relates to which toy. We then have a table of descriptive statistics, which we've already created for ourselves along with the skewness and kurtosis earlier. We can ignore the multivariate test box and go to Morchley's test of sphericity and this is an assumption for within subject designs that the differences between each of the pairs or each of the levels um, are normally distributed and ideally this would be non-significant in this case it's borderline if it's non-significant, then we would go ahead and read the sphericity assumed line in the um, within subject effect output. If it's significant, or if you want to be conservative and assume that it could be violated, then you would interpret one of these other three uh, adjusted results. And most typically, people would use greenhouse geyser. Uh, now, in our case, we, we might assume that this is violated since it's so close. Many people would report greenhouse geyser as their standard output. Now, you might notice that the F scores are large and they're the same regardless. What is adjusted in these tests is uh, the degrees of freedom to make the test slightly more conservative. But because this is such a large effect, all the results are highly significant. So we have uh, an F score. Um, we also have the partial eta squared, which is representing the percentage of variance explained by toy type for the um, for the ratings of the toy. So over 50% of the variance in toy type in like uh, how much people like toys is explained by the type of toy that they played with. And we have the power here, which indicates the likelihood of getting a significant result given the uh, effect size and sample size that we've got. So we were highly likely to detect such a large result as significant. Uh, ignore the test of within subject contrasts. And since this is an entirely within subject design, there are no tests of between subject effects of interest. We had then asked for the marginal means. Now again we already got these um, earlier. In fact these are the same means for, for each of the four levels. Uh, we do have here the grand mean which is the overall mean for all, all toys. We also clicked on the plots and that this has given us a line graph uh, which is similar to our error bar graph. And our error bar graph is better because it indicates the, the confidence intervals. So what this leaves us wondering is which of the four toys is significantly different to which other toy. So let's go back into analyze general linear model repeated measures. We leave the factor that we've set and we're going to go into options, click on the main effect here for toy type, and click compare main effects, and choose the Bonferroni uh, adjustment, and then run that test. Now everything will be the same about the output, except that we should have um, some additional output which contains pairwise comparisons. So this shows the comparison between toy 1 and 2 is significant, 1 and 3 is significant, but that the difference between 1 and 4 is not significant. Uh, the difference between 2 and 3 is also significant. So we need to go back to our graph uh, to work out those differences. So if you stare at those results, basically toy 3 is different to all other toys and toy 2 is different from toy 3 but not different to